Well, more traditional but potentially equally profitable areas are the television series and motion pictures. So who would like to start us off on that discussion? Not you, Dina. <laughs> I have no idea TV what she or wants to pictures. know. Oh, yeah. TV. Well, let's, t TV, it's a fascinating world of licensing. Um, you know, th this is one area where, you know, mechanical rates are pretty easy and other types of situations are fairly straightforward. The types of licenses you get in the TV area are just amazing. The, the, the variations, uh, that's why you've, if you've got to have, if you're doing it yourself, or you, you, it's always wise to, you know, buy our book, by, by the way. <laughs> we got all the variations. Uh, but it's a complicated situation, and you really got to know what you're doing. That's why if, if, you, if you get a call or an email or a fax from a uh, TV company, and many of these decisions have to be made very quickly. Um, you know, it's not like a movie where they're in post-production, that they have a lot of time and you've got uh, five days or ten days to decide whether you want your song in a film. You know, these decisions have to be made on the spot. You have to know what you're doing. Uh, you have to know what's fair, what's not fair. Uh, and if, if you don't answer, if you don't respond quickly to a lot of these clearance people, uh, they're not going to call you back. You know, if you can't make up your mind or if you overcharge because you're, you think your song is worth uh, you know, $25,000 uh, as opposed to the budget for the show, which might be $5,000 or $10,000, you know, they're, they're going to put you on a list, and I guarantee you there, there are these lists of uncooperative publishers or uncooperative songwriters, and, uh, you know, fine, there are certain scenes where you have to use a particular song, and then you can charge away what you want usually, but most times you have to go within a certain budget uh, and within the rules and parameters of, of the particular TV show. Uh, I, I'll give you a quick example. Uh, you know, there's, there's a new show, Life on Mars. Has anyone seen it? Yeah. Yeah, in, in, interesting concept. It's almost, it's in some respects, you know, cold case is kind of the same situation where um, this here's a detective, you know, in uh, 2008 gets has an accident and you know goes into the hospital and you know you might be in a coma. You don't know really what's going on, but all of a sudden he winds up back in 1973. You know, his precinct is there and everything you know else, and he walks in you know the, the new precinct house and you know like their typewriters versus computers and. Uh, you know, and no one knows what a cell phone is and, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Interesting concept. So here's this 2008 character caught in 1973. Uh, and the hairstyles and all the cops are great. It's, it's just, it's, it's, it's a very funny show. But obviously, they use a lot of songs. Now, obviously, you know, they're not using songs that were created in 1983 because there's a flashback here. All of a sudden, you're in 1973. So, you know, first of all, how you, how you promote to these shows, you know, if you've got a good catalog, you promote, you know, all your 1973 and prior to 73 songs uh, with the years, et cetera, et cetera. But that's a whole other discussion, how to, how to promote songs successfully as these music clearance people. But uh, I'll give you two quick examples, or I'll give you three examples of this show. Uh, one, uh, Barbara O'Reilly, uh, which is the theme to one of the, the CSI shows, you know, by, by The Who, is, is used as the detective and the woman are walking down a street and they walk into a record store and, you know, there's, there's you know, all vinyl and he makes the comment, you know, all of this is going to be replaced at some time in the future. The cop with him has no idea what he's talking about. Uh, the other interesting thing, there on TV, there's an Alka-Seltzer commercial. You know, pop, pop, or plop, plop, fizz, fizz, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, a, a copyrighted song. And in another episode, there was uh, Paul Simon's I Am A Rock being, uh, you know, performed in the, in the show. All those are licensable, uh, you know, songs and master recordings as well. Uh, in the TV area, depending how successful the show is, you get a certain type of license. Depending on whether it's a new show, you get a certain type of license. And depending on whether it's a Dancing with the Stars or American Idol, uh, Don't uh, Forget the Lyrics, et cetera, that's a whole different type of license. So you got these three or three licenses floating around there, depending on what type of show it is. Um, and then they're all variations on a particular theme, depending on the particular show. Um, I'll give you an example of CSI and House, two very successful series. Here are series that you know, they know are going into syndication, uh, guaranteed income, their hits, they'll be on for a long time. The producers have enough money to pay for songs, get as many rights as possible, because a lot of these TV licenses have a multitude of options. Um, and the reason you have options, uh, well, let me start off with an unsuccessful show. Um, the pilots or a show that just starts in the, um, you know, on TV. Producers don't know if it's going to be hit or not, so you're trying to spend as little money as possible. What normally happens is you go for a five-year license, very short-term license, uh, and that'll cost you a certain amount of money. It could be $2,500, three, 
4,500, depending on the type of rights they, they want. Uh, I'll give you a quick uh, example in that area of Gossip Girl. Uh, and there's an actual license and quote that came in. Gossip Girl was a fairly new series, so they're looking for a six-year license. Um, and really, it's, it's all media. So they've got all TV in there, excluding theatrical and excluding home video. Then they got options built into this deal. So there's a one, pr one price at the start to put the song in the show, uh, which can go anywhere for an all media license, six years, five to six years, $3,500, $4,500, $5,500. That, that's a range, you know, with, with, the, with acceptable range for most companies. You got an option, which is a 60 month option, because the initial license was for six years, to extend all the rights they got in the first license for life of copyright or in perpetuity. Um, then there's an additional option which you can exercise within 24 months of the first air date uh, for all home video. And then there's in a, a third option which is a 12 month option for a ter permanent downloading of the particular episode. And that's a separate option. Those run anywhere from $15,000 to $2,000 at least in, in today's market. That's one type of quote. But you see at the end there's always the option to extend for life of copyright. So they can get all the bundle of rights. If the show is successful, they'll say, hey, let's just pay for it and, and so we don't have to come back with all these options. The prevalent license for a house CSI is you get everything up front. One-time payment, with the exception of your ASCAP and BMI performance money as the episode is, is broadcast in the United States and around the world. Now, House and CSI go for, for something which is called an all-media all in perpetuity license. Now, forget in perpetuity. It's, it's basically life of copyright of the composition because you can't write, grant rights after a copyright is, you know, has gone into the public domain. So someone signs an in perpetuity license, they actually could be in breach of the agreement because the song goes into the public domain at some time in the future. But forget about that. Uh, that's a law school you know, discussion. Uh, media, when I say all media, it's virtually all media. You know, it includes you know, all television media, uh, all forms of basic cable, pay, subscription, video on demand, uh, non-theatrical media, all audiovisual devices, uh, personal use, uh, et cetera, et cetera, internet, uh, private networking, communications, uh, uh, streaming, downloading, network technology, storage, retrieval devices, et cetera, et cetera uh, promotional, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Once that song goes into the episode, they can do whatever they want with it under a house or CSI type license. Uh, now, because of the rights being granted, these licenses are, are, are more expensive than any other TV license. They range at the bottom end. And I'm, I'm talking songs that are, that are somewhat well known. We're not talking about the baby band songs who will put their songs in or, or mas masters into shows, you know, just to get the promotion and just to get on TV goes anywhere from $15,000 to about $32,000 for those all media rights. Now, there are some all media uh, licenses that exclude theatrical. You know, what if, uh, if the show, uh, they bundle a bunch of shows together or if it's a mini series and they truncate it down to a movie, they put it into theaters overseas, there's usually an extra price for that. Uh, so some all media licenses actually exclude theatrical, but most will, you know, once you, once you put the song in the show, you know, that's it. Uh, I'll give you a quick idea. and. You, these are all negotiated licenses in TV. You know, unlike the UK and you know, other, where there are some rates established by the societies, this is all pure negotiation. But there are ranges. Remember, these shows have, do have budgets, and they will, well, they will pay substantial fees if, in fact, uh, you have the right song. But you can't really go with, with without the, or outside their budget uh, if if you really want to have a good relationship with the show. And remember, you always want the, these shows to come back to you. You know, as I said, if music clearance people find out that you're an uncooperative publisher or you really charge too much all the time, they're going to try to find uh, you know, another publisher with similar songs before they have to go to you. One last thing on TV, uh, and I'll close it with that, is you've got the Dancing with the Stars type of licenses, the Don't Forget the Lyrics, uh, the American Idols. These, the, the types of options are substantial. I mean, you've got six, seven, eight, ten various options in these agreements, you know, when this letter actually come in, and they're normally facts still these days, more and more, uh, you know, emails coming in, but, but it's interesting, but a lot of times they like you to sign off on the faxed email and send it back to them, 
and either cross out things that you don't like or there's certain or raise certain figures, et cetera. But it's still primarily a fax business and a phone business, though we're heading more towards uh, you know, uh, the, the Internet. But I'll give you a quick example on don't forget the lyrics. These are type of options. There's an option for one year. North America is the territory. Oh, the, the other licenses are usually for the world. But don't forget the lyrics. It's one year, North America, free basic and paid cable, satellite television, and that's it. That's what the license is. Then there are all these options. Extension of the initial term to exclude the world, to include the world, excluding North America. Extension for an additional five year, additional years, North America. Extension for the world, an additional five years, home video. Uh, based on 10,000 units, uh, then there's a royalty, internet, mobile wireless, uh, mobile wireless ringtones, <coughs> ringbacks, et cetera. Okay, so you're sitting there and there's a bunch of other options. You know, what do I do with this? Okay, page two actually helps you out. First of all, they tell you it's on a most favorite nations basis. So every song being used in the show, and this is true of American Idol, Dancing with the Stars, you name it, all these shows, you know, that are that type of ilk on most favorite nations, which means that every, every single song gets paid the same amount of money. So your basic decision is whether or not you want the song used in the show, and that's about it. You either say yes or no. If you say yes, here are all the fees, and I'll just give you a basic, I won't tell you which uh, show this is, but for uh, one year free basic cable TV North America, uh, $750. That's a little low, but they, they use a lot of songs uh, in this show. Uh, if there are multiple uses, it could be $1,000. Um, then the various extensions, there are all these lists of fees. And if you want to talk afterwards, I'll give you a, a different range. But the only good thing about these licenses, as I said, they're very complex, but they tell you what the fees are. So it's a question of do you want your show on American Idol or don't you want it in American Idol? And it's as simple as that. If you, if you don't like the fees, you're not in the show. So, so motion picture is not to simplify, but you usually get all media. Um, the only difference, a noticeable, di notable difference, is that outside of the U.S. and, and Todd, if you could talk about this, are the performance royalties due that are not due in the U.S. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Everybody forgets about it. if you get a song in a movie. I always tell, try to get get a song into any movie possible because the back end royalties. You got the initial fee up front, and that's negotiated. Obviously, it's a life of copyright license, so they can play the film anywhere in, in the world uh, for uh, forever. But outside the U.S., one of the big sources of income for everybody, whether it's a songwriter, particularly uh, scorers, uh, you know, the people who write the, uh, the scoring in the in the movie, because every country outside except the U.S. Uh, every major country has a uh, the performance rights local performance rights society does collect license fees from movie theaters and there's a lot of different formulas out there uh, you know and but the I, I kind of summarize them into approximately one percent of the gross box office uh, less certain society deductions goes to all the writers and music publishers of all the music in a film so you start thinking about a film like let's say Titanic is a uh, there's 1.6 billion it's the biggest film ever one point I think one or, or about a million dollars was from overseas theatrical performances. So you start thinking about 1% less certain deductions, you know, you've got a substantial amount of money coming in from any uh, successful box office film. I, I was with uh, Hans Zimmer and uh, James Newton Howard, I know pretty well, because they did The Dark Knight. That thing uh, is just going to hit, it's getting close to a billion right now. I think it just went over. So the money out there is really amazing. So if you are representing songwriters, music publishers, or the scorers, who, and the studio, as you know, normally owns the music publishing uh, for any of the background score guys. Uh, there's a lot of money out there that uh, comes through the reciprocal agreements between ASCAP and BMI and all these foreign societies uh, where they send the money to, if it's an ASCAP writer, let's say that they'll PRS in England will send it to you, or SOCAN in Canada will send it to the ASCAP, who then distributes to that writer. Vice versa, uh, the U.S. societies cover all foreign society writers when they have performances in the U.S., but it's a major source of income. You know, we still, unfortunately, though, we don't have this theatrical right in the U.S., right? So that's still... Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, it was a 1948 case, the Alden Rochelle case against ASCAP. It was an antitrust case, and uh, the, uh, unfortunately, the, the right was lost through that case, and it was really uh, everything that was uh, occurred be, uh, due to that decision uh, was all corrected, but uh, it has, that right has not come back to the U.S. Yeah. No chance of it coming to the U.S.? 
I'm sorry. No chance of it coming to the U.S. Any development uh, it's, on it's, that? It's been very difficult. Uh, it's, it's as you can imagine, it's a major issue with the foreign societies because they collect for our writers for movie theaters, and we can't collect for for, for their writers. But uh, we've had discussions with the Justice Department. We're under ASCAP and BMI are under consent decrees with the uh, government, which regulate us to a, to a degree. So they have not been willing to uh, uh, look into that again. Yeah. And just a really quick one, uh, you know, take, take the film Iron Man. Uh, you know, one of the opening scenes, you had Robert Downey Jr. Uh, in, in a Humvee. Uh, they were playing, uh, you know, Back in Black, the ACDC yeah. song. Uh, now, you know, if, if you're a music publisher or songwriter, you take Variety or Hollywood Reporter and you look at the, not the U.S. box office you could care less about because you're not getting paid for theatrical royalties. You look at the foreign and Iron Man made about $257 million in gross income in foreign territories. So, you know, the score and all the songs in Iron Man are going to in some, some way uh, share in that 257 million because uh, that's the gross and the societies, if they're paying 1%, that could be about uh, anywhere from 20 to $25 million payable in performance rights uh, to the, the score and the songwriters and music publishers of the songs in the motion picture. So if you're in my business, you always look for the foreign box office as opposed to the U.S. box office. Yeah, one, one last thing on that, just for a little sophistication here, is that if you know anything about how foreign societies work, they, they are, some societies have, when I mentioned deductions, I meant with a capital D. There can be some substantial local deductions before the money goes out. So just, and they vary by society. Uh, they said, I look at PRS, SOCAN, and APRA. Those three societies are great because they don't have the, uh, those type of deductions. But France, Germany, other Euro EU countries do. So it's something just to pay attention to when you're looking at future income uh, that you're going to make from uh, any source.